Welcome everybody, Aesop Grimm here, and this is the continuation of our Learning Stellar series, where I'm the one doing the learning. I just started the countdown timer, we're going to play the first 10 minutes here, and uh, it's real straightforward, let's bring up Unity, uh, you'll recognize it right away. We have... I need to look at, uh, like, this place right here, showing that I have a housing issue. That's because there's three people there. Uh, so really, I don't need to look at that. I need to move these pops. But uh, we have uh, 11 jobs open on Vermilion Prime, 10 on Research Section A of our Ring World, 23 on Factory Section Bravo of our Ring World, 14 on Habitable Section. I'll have to call that Farming Section Charlie. On our ring world, we have a job open on Unity, plus Unity is building the last of its research complexes. Um, so those are the, that's the cycle that we're in. We're trying to fill these jobs and grow populations. So uh, let's unpause it. We're in the year 2451. And... I'm going to go to the research section and I'm going to resettle these pops. Okay. Now, if I look at the housing numbers, everything looks green again. So that's what it was. I needed to get some pops off of planets. And if we look at our research section, uh, we only have one job left to fill. With a lot of expansion room. Planet deficit. Oh, the Saigon Peacekeepers constructed a strategic coordination center. Our pioneers have made planet fall. Hit pause. Okay, this planet is taking 43 energy. Do it's a ring world, so it's mechanistic. It runs off energy, and I'm curious if the other planets. Okay, so it is different. No, no, no. Wait, this one takes 74 energy to run. Oh, this one doesn't take it because it's producing. So it's not at a deficit over here because it's producing. Okay. So there's nothing really special about that's just planets in general require energy. Okay. Unpause. This anchorage needs needs what? A silo, I guess. Uh yeah. I guess big picture racing towards the Colossus project so if that's the case if that's the case what I could really use is unity which we're we're pretty strong in unity but we have room to be stronger I don't want to mess with this place though I would have to go places that I have open Look, we can, uh, I don't really want to upgrade either. I don't want to create jobs. Yeah, that's a mistake. I need to fill the ones that I have open. 17, 1, 22, 14, and 2. 
Science division report success. Okay. Oh, well, look at this. We're up over 4K on research. We got the Gauss Cannon. 39.13 average damage. That doesn't seem very impressive. Oh, this is not a Titan. Uh, it, it's not an X size. It's a large size. Okay. New research. Uh, 600 and... What is that? 66,066, 183, 80. We got a Giga Cannon here. 145.83. So this would compete with the Tachyon Lance. Great. This is upgrading our big guns to Gauss Cannons. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Maybe it's Gauss. But I Ship always say Gauss. Ships refitted. Ships refitted. Oh, okay, that's the sound of the ships being refit. I thought that I had told my construction ship to come here and build. Ships refitted. Science division report success. What do you call it? A mega shipyard. <laughs> deploy to here and then use the other construction ship and move over over to here oh what did we learn shield hit points shield harmonics too energy credits from jobs uh i think we're doing okay there even though we've taken a big dip we used to be up over 2000 Maybe we haven't taken a big dip. Maybe we're just under 2,000. Let's take energy weapon damage. All right, you, sir. I want to... Build a mega shipyard. That's what it was. The last time I did that, I didn't click here. All right, well, that'll be nice to have a mega shipyard. Pair it up with a full shipyard, too. That's going to be some massive production speed. Okay, let's, uh,. Unity, do you still have jobs open? Yes, you do. You need two people, so... There's one, I guess, uh... I don't know what to do with you, man. Uh, I don't know why he unemployed. Take that one. from farmers plus 25 percent so we're gonna call this science division report success farming section really it's a population growth center because I don't really need farms why is this causing us a problem do we have amenities here research industrial yeah we kind of do but I mean oh this shouldn't really be causing us an issue
What did we learn? Leader lifespan. Okay. Uh, I guess army damage. One of these worlds, I put some luxury housing on. Was it this one? Luxury residences. Yeah. Okay. Which, which fixed my problem. I was barely under the threshold and I didn't want to lose a mining district. Okay, well, that's what's going on. It's all rinse and repeat, right? So, uh, I don't know what I would make that this is just a colony. Don't mess with it. So, uh, we're gonna pause our countdown timer. And uh, I'm gonna alt tab. And I'm gonna put you guys on pause right now. All right, welcome back, guys. We're in the year 2466, and I just learned a tech that opened up another ascension slot, so we'll take the Colossus project. <laughs> Uh, the Colossus Project is being hailed as the single most important advancement in the ongoing struggle against the wretched aliens that plague the galaxy. As designed, a Colossus ship is a gargantuan, heavily armored frame fitted with a lone planet killer class weapon. Its ability to simply wipe the galaxy clean of planets that will not submit to us will certainly prove invaluable, as the Xeno threat is far from over. <laughs> yeah. That sounds exactly like the kind of uh, the kind of uh, society that we're playing here. All right, so that's going to dovetail nicely with another tech that we're researching, which is the Juggernaut, and that will unlock the Colossal Assembly Yards. There's two months left on that. Let's see if we can let that one month left, and. There we go. Science division report success. So we can now do juggernauts. Flak artillery. I never take flak. Let's get the battleship holes. Okay, so what I want to do. Oh, by the way, we are on phase three, I think, of our mega ship framework. And at an EB station, I want to convert, I guess, a deep space black site. I might end up converting this back because I think the mega shipyard will be able to make them. But I'll convert that to a colossal assembly yard. And uh, as far as where we're at now here, this ring world, it actually feels like it slowed me down. I was trying to build my naval capacity and I got caught up with a bunch of jobs over here on the ring world. Oh, we're down to eight on the factory section. I converted my farming section into a second research section and took that second research section or, or my fourth section of the ring world and this is going to be a bureaucratic world where I may also stack some farming if I need it but I'm at plus 88 on farm I think I'm okay it'll probably be designated just as bureaucracy let's put down a robot assembly plant and a hollow theater okay and uh, that's that division reports a new breakthrough got flash coolant at this point in time you can almost just pick a thing 
you know, so here, building cost. Um, yeah, we're in the year 2466. I'm going to go ahead and pause our timer again, alt tabbing, and I'm placing you guys back on pause as well right now. All right, welcome back, everybody. And it's uh, the year 2473. We're coming up on finishing our mega shipyard. But we just finished the Harmony Tree. And so I am now going to take... I am going to take Galactic Contender, I think. This one is nifty, but probably not needed right now. It might be our last pick. I don't necessarily feel too much of a need for anything else. For this particular playthrough. So, yeah. Galactic Contender it is. And, uh, I think I'm going to kind of start maybe prepping for war. I want... Ten Cybrix Warforms. And, uh, there's no difference here, is there? We'll use our normal robots. This number needs to go to 39. So we get 20 robotic assault armies, and that should be strong enough for just about anything out there. Uh, this, we could upgrade it, but it's just going to open up more jobs. Right now, I think all of the jobs are right here at Vermilion, which is what I want. Okay, so uh, Vermilion is going to have fortress jobs, so we can move that guy over, and I guess that'll be it for right now. Alright, we're at about 12 minutes, let's just go ahead and finish up the episode here, I'm going to let the the timer run and keep the recording on. Uh, that's right, I forgot that I needed to research the Colossus project, so I went ahead and did that. We got 13 months left for that to be complete. And I showed you that we took Galactic Contender. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. So we're going to do 33% more damage to the biggest military threat on the map right here, the Saigon Peacekeepers. Oh, the gun pointed at the head of the universe. Lead scientists across all conceivable fields have at last finalized their proposals for the Planet Killer class weapon that will arm our first Colossus type ships. We may select one proposal to develop alongside the final stages of the Colossus project. And I'm going to take the World Cracker. Neutron Sweep would destroy all biological life and allow us to kind of take over the planet. I want to get rid of the planet. Which ironically enough is going to improve our performance as we get rid of populations and information that the background simulator has to keep in keep track of. So we're going to take the World cr Cracker. A directed feed of thermic energy superheats the atmosphere and agitates the planet's core, setting up disastrous tectonic events. 
A final and comparatively minute concussive blast is then delivered, cracking the planet open. And that sounds pretty grim. <laughs> All right. Um, got edict duration. I'm just kind of knocking stuff off of... At this point in time, I think we're pretty much done with everything that we need from research. Um, the engineering section still seems to have viable things. Everything else is continuing technology or stuff that I skipped because it's not applicable to the kind of civilization I built in this playthrough. It's 2474. We're more than fine over here. Don't, uh, if you guys were kind of alarmed by that, it's not a problem. It's neg three there on the moats and the gases. And we are producing so much in our economy that we can afford to buy those. Also, the Zero, uh, we don't even use that. So we can, I've got 2,000 of them and we can sell that for money also and convert that money into purchasing power for these strategic resources. Uh, 21 open jobs. We're up to 840 naval cap. The mega shipyard is now fully online. It can produce starships in unprecedented volume. Special project complete. And the Colossus project is completed. The Colossus project, the monumental task of designing the biggest weapons platform in human history and a world cracker to arm it with, has yielded results and drawn to a close. Nice. Okay, over here under Shipyard, yes, we can indeed. I'm going to build a Colossus and a Juggernaut. Hmm. Ship Designer. There is our Colossus. And it's got the uh, World Cracker weapon on it. Then here's here's the juggernaut. The sucker's a carrier. It can make its own. It can uh, create fleets very slowly, but it does it. I I favor the tachyon lance. Maybe we could equip it with the. Uh, a giga cannon 100% armor damage 50% hull damage uh, I don't know just for SMGs we'll do that then we have these followed by let's throw lasers up Okay, the lasers are going to do extra armor damage. While the gas cannons do extra shield damage. Over here, I suppose I will put... I can't. We're at, we're at plus one power. I want to need an advanced booster. Okay, put shields up. What's this? Strike craft damage plus 20% and speed plus 20%. That's pretty nice. We got options. Orbital bombardment damage. Point defense damage. Jump cooldown. Ship weapons range has increased 40%. I'll stick with the strike command. Um, what I have to do then is... 
Well, darn. Uh, let's see here. Can I shoot? Okay. I guess shipyard. How do I get this sucker up, man? Take the juggernaut out, go back over into ship designer, come down, grab the pin dragon. And uh, I was going to put a giga cannon up here. And gamma lasers right here. An advanced booster. Followed by Shield Cat. Everything here was fine. Save that. Yes. X out. And throw up the Juggernaut. Okay. Okay, now what that means is that at the Neb, I really don't need to have a colossal assembly yard so i will go back to the deep space black site and we'll hit on pause there we go all right so we're filling jobs now at vermilion there are 21 jobs to fill this will increase our naval cap but i don't see us getting to eight titans that's appears like it'll be an awful lot oh the Igarian monopoly might become the first test citizenry for us to be to do aggressive expansion against Oh my. Oh, they're superior in technology? That's ridiculous. But they're pathetic in fleet power. I don't know. We might should go after... The UNE. Oh man, look, we're, we're sort of locked out. Yeah, okay, so that kind of does it for us. We're gonna have to... We're gonna go after these guys. Right here. That's uh, going to create some weird choke points that I'm not going to, probably not going to care about. I want to keep all my defense points where they're at until I extend to a point where it makes sense. So let me show you an example. Our choke points are here at Menakadir and here at Lasiria. There's no other way for anybody to get into our empire, right? Complete. From From over here. I'll keep them there until I can manage to grab Chengal and Poa. And I would need this also. But if I, if I took this whole section, then my new choke points would be here and here. If I don't, if I were say to take this entire, all of the Tebron free traders, That doesn't make sense. Let, let's say I just, uh, it does. I, I don't want to have choke points here and here. I would probably still move up to Jengal and just, if I lost this stuff to other people, I lost it. I don't care. But if I can't get neat choke points like that, I, I'm probably not going to move from where I'm already established. I'll just lose. Theoretically, if I were to, to lose in a fight, I would be willing to give this stuff up. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, Vermilion. We can resettle a couple people. Did the other one resettle on its own? I guess so. So, 18 open jobs. I think next episode, this will be filling up. Actually, what we could do is uh, just put you guys on pause and, and I'll let these jobs fill up. 
let's pause the game and then whenever I bring you back we'll be done with that section and maybe next episode we'll attack I don't know if that'll happen for sure or not depends on if there's anything else I see that I need to take care of before risking angering the galaxy I'm alt tabbing and placing you on pause right now all right guys I brought you back because I actually have to go and so I need to wrap this episode up it's uh, 2487 we have four jobs left here on uh, vermilion and then uh, Jaffon, because I upgraded to a system capital complex, now has three jobs open, so that's seven. And that's really all we're waiting on. I was able to uh, upgrade the fleets to have the extra destroyers, battleships, and cruisers. So we're now sitting at around 80. Does everybody? Yeah, it's that's a rather large difference. There's a we're at 81 to 85k per fleet we have both a juggernaut and a doomsday colossus vessel and if we can get to 1078 fleet power or a naval capacity then that would allow us to construct one more fleet so because we have capacity for a fifth titan uh, but we are we're going to need a thousand seventy two to go ahead and and authorize the construction of that fleet uh, i don't have to have it i can build it and we would just pay extra money for it but i i like to stay within the caps sometimes i place hard limits on myself and to me this is what the administration power of this state can withstand so uh That'll be that. Let's see here. We're, we're doing really well on our economy all over the place. Consumer goods took a big jump because I uh, uh, leveled this up. I noticed that that had not yet been leveled up. We can also level up these strongholds. Maybe that'll get us to 1,072. There's a few of these lurking around on some of these older planets. Um, if we look at the victory thing here, we can see that the UN has indeed passed us, and they are blowing by us. They are really ramping up now. Uh, so we'll want to keep an eye on that. But uh, in the next episode, because offline, I'll go ahead and get those jobs cleaned up. In the next episode, I think we're going we're gonna to start wiping the galaxy out. We're going to begin with the Tebron Manufacturing uh, area. And we are building ground invasion forces, and they're overwhelming in their power. Uh, but we probably won't use them. We're, we're going to crack worlds. And so that'll be in the next episode. Let's uh, look up contacts here. Uh, UNE is back to inferior instead of pathetic when it comes to fleet power. That's actually pretty impressive given that I just made a big jump. So, uh, anywho, we are kind of keeping pace with each other. And I've, uh, it might be more wise to attack the UNE first. We might do that. Yeah. We'll give that a shot and see how it goes. Uh... Oh, that's right. I would have to take on these guys first. So it might mean attacking two empires at once, which isn't what I normally want to do. It's these guys. Are you guys uh, allied? You're allied with the Tebron, yeah, I see. So. Okay, so if we attack the Tebron manufacturing, we're automatically at war with these guys also, and maybe that will open things up to go ahead and 
at least take this area down and the UNE probably just let the UNE grab it. Yeah, maybe we would do that. Okay, well, let's go ahead and save. Did I already save? Okay, good. No, I did not, so I was that was good to go ahead and check that. And again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Thanks for coming by the channel, and I will see you in the next episode where this story continues. Thank you.